Sometimes you will run into some data that you don't know how to analyze. And this was what happened for me the first time I encountered this data. I worked around it, but I knew that this was not optimal. Um, so I'm going to share with you what data type this is and how to deal with it so that you get the most of the data that you have. This data comes by different names and, and we've called it functional data. You might call it curvature data, but common for this data is that it's not described by a single number. It has to be described by some side of, of curvature effect. So something that is a function of a time or hertz or something else. Um, but let's, let's look at the example that I brought in. This might make more sense. So here we have a design experiment that was set up and I have in this experiment four factors and I have variation in three levels. So you see for beats, I have 80, 85 and 90. For strength, I have 15, 20 and 25. Uh, and I have a, a column for the Y. So if this was normal data, I would run this experiment and I was, would type in my Y there. But when I perform this DOE, what I get back is not something with 17 rows, but something with 378 rows. And why is that? Well, that's because my Y, which is size in nanometer, is a function of time. So we can look at this in a chart that's much more easy. And we can see that the 17 batches or the 17 different runs that I've done is looks something like this. And what I really want to understand is not the size at a given time, but the size as a function of time. And I want to understand when do I get curvatures that have a fast slope into specification limit? And when do I have curvatures that have this more long degradation? Because for me in this example, I want to have a short time to spec because it means the cycle time for this mill is short. But imagine this was a drug and we're looking at degradations time and we're interested in having a shelf life that is as long as possible. We might want it to model for curvatures that had a long tail. What we can do with the functional data explorer that's available is to us in Jump Pro. We can model this so that the output looks something like this. Now, what I wanted you to focus on in this picture is this part right here. So normally when we look at these profilers, we are interested in understanding that number because that is the outcome of our analysis. But for this kind of curvature or functional data, we're looking at, at this part because we want to understand how our four parameters affect our curvature behavior. So in this example, if I set beads to a low setting and strength to a low setting, you can see I have a very long tail and which was good for me if I had a drug that would where I wanted a long shelf life. But in this case, I need a short cycle time. So I see by increasing the, the amount of beats, I get a shorter time. But the real big one here is increasing the amount of the strength. And that will give me really close into um, really fast into spec. But I can see that I'm getting a little too close to the lower spec limit. So maybe by improving the flow, I get that more centered in the middle of my specification limit. That for me was a real eye opener in order to look at this kind of data. And what I did earlier was maybe just looking at the endpoint or looking at a, a middle point and try to model for that specific point. But I would then throw away a lot of the data, but using this method instead, I'm utilizing all the data that I have available and I get a much better understanding. I've seen this type analysis used to model bacteria growth, to model which media will give us the best growth over time. I've seen these used to understand temperature, temperature curves in injection molding. I've seen this used in yeast production. I've also seen this used in spectral data. Um, so, so this kind of data exists a lot of different places. Uh, but let me know if you have this kind of data and where you have it and whether you would want me to try and find an example to more in depth explain how this works. But uh, give it a like if you liked it. Leave a subscription if you think this is content you want to see more of. But uh, again, thanks for watching and bye.